What's up guys, Derek more please more today we're going to be talking about Callum Von Moger. He recently posted a transformation picture that a few people tagged me in and expectedly because somebody gains a does a, any sort of body transformation whatsoever now and I pretty much by default get tagged by some people. Uh, which is fine by me, gives me uh, content. So anyways, we see this transformation here and he says six weeks and 15 pounds difference between the left and right pictures, four weeks left and 10 pounds more to go. Some of the top comments, 15 pounds in six weeks, eyeballs. Some good deca he's got there with a little help from his trend. <laughs> left side slightly dominant, crazy work though. 15 pounds in six weeks for the love of trend. Please be safe. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What are you doing differently? Why don't you post workouts? Um, let's see. Six weeks. Six weeks. Um, some of the comments. Trains hard as fuck. Didn't want to drop the obvious. Something like that. Nice sandwiches you're eating. Crying face. Crying laughing face. Bro, you look stacked. I can't believe you did this all while vegan. Laughing face. Face slap. <laughs> How much does the ink weigh in at? From staunch to sick cunt. Razor sharp, 100. Is this just me or is this like the laziest comment ever? Just like a fucking knife and 100. It's like, <laughs> I am just here for engagement. I am not here to put any actual fucking substance to this comment whatsoever. I'm here to fucking put a fucking knife and a 100. <laughs> Dude from no tats to full arm tat up. What cycle? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm about to jump on it. Yeah, bro. Fire, 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 fire. Strong engagement comment. What do you do? How the fuck do you put on that much clean muscle in six weeks? So I am anticipating that whatever this thread is, is probably going to have some unreasonable comments and then probably some comments that are thinking the same thing I'm thinking. And I'm speculating it's going to be muscle memory along with anabolics, along with training. Because at the end of the day, this is not something that is unusual to see for Callum. We often see him regress when he uh, takes time off or injures himself. Um, and then when he gets back on his regimen, he blows back up again. Does he actually gain this much muscle in this much time frame? Is it new contractile tissue above and beyond what he had already banked up myonuclei wise in the past? And when I say that, I mean, it's been shown in some of the literature that when you build up this like bank of myonuclei throughout exogenous hormone use that you don't actually really lose it for the rest of your life. You kind of just sit on it that you can then induce hypertrophy and again, once you have that anabolic stimulus. So you can technically like lose the muscle cosmetically, you can actually lose the muscle, but getting that progress back, it's simple muscle memory where once you have the proper anabolic stimulus, you can fire back up to that again. It's kind of like Kevin Lavroni, the, uh, you know, growing into the show, you'd see him gain fucking, I don't know, 30 plus pounds of seemingly lean tissue in a matter of a couple months. Um, was this, you know, something that you could teach somebody how to do? No, it's something that you would only be able to do via losing that muscle and then regaining the pre-existing amount of muscle that you already had before. It's not like you're actually building new contractile tissue above and beyond what you already had. So him saying, um, him having this crazy before and after transformation or the amount of weight that's changed, is it actually, you know, like new progress? Not necessarily. And that's not to take away from it at all. It's very impressive, but you have to keep in mind, this is not like some revolutionary thing he's come up with when people are like, well, what are you doing? How the fuck do you put on that much muscle in six weeks? It's like once Callum gets to where he used to be, he's not going to be able to put on, <laughs> he'd be lucky to put on a few pounds of muscle in months after that, once he gets to where he used to be, because that's his actual set point with sufficient amounts of anabolics, training, diet, rest, etc. So let's see what everyone else has to say in this thread. Roids, PED, he is on don't get this wrong he was talking about pardon roids ped he is on don't get this wrong he was talking about happy face <laughs> instagram man eat and trend hard he is enhanced as he stated in a post a few months ago shit loads of <laughs> shit loads of trend but you can still achieve this within a year or two of hard work natty don't discard hard work what you fucking kidding me all guys are saying roids, and obviously that is a bug, fa a big factor, but he has top class genetics of staying lean and amazing work ethic. Praying. I actually use this praying emoji too, to be like, thanks. You know, it's like a, it's like an easy way to be like, thank you. 
but it's just funny because it's actually like you're fucking praying and it doesn't really make sense, but somehow everyone like gets it. So I use that too. Uh, more doesn't mean more results. You got to find that fine line for yourself. I put muscle on quicker with lower doses when I cycle. He has stated he likes the old school Arnold Royd of pre <laughs> Likes the old school Arnold Royd. That's funny. The true answer is that he has been that big before and that plays a huge role in what he's done. Finally, a logical comment. Muscle memory is entirely real and no one would gain 15 pounds growing into a show if they haven't been like that big, if they haven't been that big before. You know, deja vu to Lavroni. And that is exactly what, uh, you know, I speculated as well. well that, same guy, that's entirely wrong. At his level of fitness, having lifted for so many years, he's not entirely putting, he's not, he's entirely not putting that amount of muscle without the use of PEDs. What you're saying is he has a genetics of someone who's Mr. Olympia. Um, I'm talking to the guy who posted this comment about the guy who posted this comment. <laughs> Trying to motivate him. I'm not talking about Callum. Eye rolling emoji. He's more likely to lose muscle than gain if he went natty. This dude is a hard motherfucker, but no, his physique ain't possible natty. And if you believe it, you're dumb and naive. Oh crap, man. I, damn, the, okay, so basically, um, they're talking about if the, yeah, okay. So we're talking about if this is naturally achievable or not. I think we've already gone off the deep end in terms of what this kind of shit show is going to turn into in the comment section. But for all the, you know, logical people, they're kind of coming to the same outcome that I did, which is this is a result of muscle memory, PEDs, staying on a diet, training properly, as opposed to prior to that, not having all those things in place. So is this new muscle tissue above and beyond what he had in the past? I don't think so. Like, frankly, his physique doesn't look any better than what I've seen at his peak in the past. Maybe he will surpass it. I just think that this transformation in particular is largely muscle memory dominated, if you want to call it that. And this is uh, very reminiscent of uh, a Lavrone or a Lavroni. I honestly forget how to pronounce it. And somebody corrected me on my last uh, post. Perhaps it is Lavrone, and I apologize if that is the case because I have definitely been saying Lavroni for a fucking long time. But anyways, apologies, Kevin Lavrone or Lavroni, whatever it is. I'm pretty sure it's Lavrone now, but I could be wrong again. Callum, again, this is a perfect example of banked myonuclei building up and getting that muscle memory and then coming off or going down to a physiological replacement amount or just not having the proper stimulus to maintain that tissue and then going back on whatever he's doing to get back up to the baseline. And then from there, once he's reached that set point of where he had previously plateaued, that's where shit gets really hard and you're actually looking at like a few pounds of contractile tissue gain per year, if you're lucky, at the level of experience he's at in his lifting career. This guy is so advanced at this point, he would be lucky to pack on four to five pounds of muscle a year, even on gear, in my opinion. So um, above and beyond what his max you know, benchmark is. You know, not what based on what his previous was. You can bounce back extremely quickly if you've been there before, put it that way. So that's what I think we're seeing here. I don't think this is anything crazy. I don't think this is a revolutionary technique or a revolutionary cycle this guy has deployed or he just started using new compounds. He's starting to use GH and insulin and all this shit. Whatever he was doing before, presumably is probably what he's doing now. And I would not um, speculate otherwise personally. This seems pretty cut and dry in terms of what it is. And we've seen it many times historically with Callum. So anyways, his physique looks nuts. It'll be interesting to see what he does on stage because it's been a while. And I'm sure a lot of the uh, fans are, you know, very, uh, um, are anticipating seeing him on stage because it's been, uh, it's been a minute. So long overdue and uh, it should be interesting to see how much damage he does. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think this is just a uh, what I said, do you think this is, uh, him, you know, jumping on some crazy new fucking stack and all of a sudden he's putting on new muscle tissue that he never had before? What do you think is going on? All the comments help the algorithms that are much appreciated when you guys drop them down. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at more plates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you Twitter, TikTok, Apple podcast. If you want to uh, support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. So if you want to get your blood work addressed, get any imbalances or deficiencies you have um, hormonally looked at and then have an individualized protocol designed for you and mailed right to your door uh, from the comfort of your own home. You don't even need to leave the fucking house. Um, you talk to the doctor over Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever you want is convenient for you. If you are interested in TRT or HRT in any context whatsoever, I recommend you check it out. And also Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, my turnkey nootropic formulas, as well as 
my pre-workout formulas, Gorilla Mode, the hybrid comprehensive pre-workout, the most stacked overall product on the market. Go pull out your current pre, you know what time it is, pull out the fucking pre, look at the label, compare it to the label on Gorilla Mode, the maxed out, nine gram dose of L-citrulline, the top end, glycer pump dose, betaine anhydrous, agmatine sulfate, the potent dose of L-tyrosine, Kana, the stacked stimulant complex with caffeine and phenethyl dimethylamine citrate. We got huperzine in there as well for the nootropic component. This product is completely maxed out from every vector in a hybrid context. We have the NO precursors, the plasma expanders, the hyperhydrating agents, the nootropics, the stimulants. This product is the most turnkey pre-workout formula on the market bar none. And um, really there is nothing else that beats it. If, if you want to get more specific though, for specific goals, you can look at the stimulant free product. This is maxed out to an even greater extent in the NO precursor hyperhydrating and plasma expanding component because we have several different angles that we are addressing that weren't addressed in the hybrid formula above and beyond what you can already achieve with that, which frankly is probably <laughs> is considered maxed out already. This is 10 grams of L-citrulline, the max efficacious dose found in the clinical literature where no more would yield any additional benefit whatsoever. We had to set it apart somehow. So we have one more gram of L-citrulline. We also cranked up the glycer pump and betaine even more, more agmatine. We have nitrosogene in there at 1500 milligrams. We even have an ACE inhibitor via vasodrive AP for more vasodilation via a totally separate vector. We also have a potent dose of nitrates. This product is completely different than any stimulant-free pre you've seen on the market because it addresses every single angle and maxes it out to the max amount possible. And it is for those who don't want stimulants, can't you know take their pre-workout at nighttime because that's when they train and otherwise need something stimulant-free or people who just want the maxed out performance in a mind-muscle connection, you know, driving nutrients and water and fluid into the muscle. Um, this is what you want to get for maxed out performance with none of the stimulants or nootropic components. If you want the Stim Junkie formula though, at a cost-effective price point, Gorilla Mode Stim, this is essentially the classic formula with the mental component taken out and maxed out to an even more significant extent for all the stim junkies out there or for those who just want a cost-effective pre without any of the pump products. So we have a doubled dose of L-tyrosine, double the Kana. We increase the N-phenethyl dimethylamine citrate. We increase the caffeine. This product is a stim junkie dream or for somebody who just wants pure mental performance, this is what you're gonna want and it's at a much more cost-effective price point because it doesn't have all of the other performance ingredients in it. It's just pure mental acuity, sharpness, focus, aggression, energy, etc. bundled in one turnkey formula for mental performance. So check that out if you're interested. It's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.